As always, when there's a new product, the folks at iFixit leap into action. Kyle Weens is on the line with us. He's the co-founder of iFixit. Hey, Kyle, how you doing? Hey, Leo, doing great. Great to see I you. I didn't get to take CES. Yeah, are, you're not at CES. I was there. I got back yesterday. Just for us? Good man. Just for you. You are the best. So where, where do you live, Kyle? Oh, we're in San Luis Obispo. Okay, well, that's um, not so far. I love SLO. Beautiful nice town. Place. So you have these. And you guys yes. did a teardown. Tell us about it. Okay, so this was painful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when, when we score devices, you know, we give them a 1 through 10 repairability score. It's really like how much did we suffer? And if we didn't suffer very much, it gets a 10. <laughs> if we suffered a lot, it gets a very low score. Now, these are small, though. I mean, have you taken a lot of little tiny things like this apart? But the, we do. The problem is that you know we're, we're very good at taking small things apart. Like we take about Rolex watches, which is okay. smaller than this, and and it's fine. But this is not designed to come to come apart. As a matter of fact, they basically just took the batteries and they encased them in glue, and then they wrapped that glue in plastic. There's no screws, no fasteners, no way right. to tear it down. Oh, no, there so, you are I mean, prying we, it we apart. And, yeah, that's surprisingly it. gory for a gadget show. I know. <laughs> It's, oh. it's aggressive, like the amount oh. of goop is phenomenal. Oh, wow. They just load up the inside with, with black tar, and everything's in there. Holy it's cow. A, it's really a struggle. Uh, so it's interesting. So there's there's 400 million ba uh, hour battery in the case, and then you've got the AirPods. So it was really two separate teardowns for us to pull apart one of the earpieces and then to pull apart the case. It's interesting as you look at build quality on these things, particularly on the AirPods, the seam around the edge and maybe if you take yours out and look at them and compare the two the two uh, units that you have and, and look at the seams, it doesn't seem like their manufacturing tolerance is up to Apple standards on the outside of the case. I have heard that. I've heard from some people that they could see the seam on one and not on the other, and I think we yes. kind of – are in that and you can see them in similar. different places. The two I've got yeah. here, one is quite a bit better than the other one. Yeah. Do you think that's why they're ha having so much difficulty making these? Uh, that's one thing. I mean, I would think they could get, I don't think that's it. I think there, there are some other challenges. I think that the, the case is, is a challenge. Getting the case apart took us a long time. Um, and we actually, I mean, we have all kinds of prying and scraping tools. We ended up cutting ourselves pretty good in the process. So we had like wow. bloody ear pod oh, I'm cases. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. That's we bleed, so you don't have to. But this is uh, mostly just magnet and battery, right? Is there's nothing else in there? Pretty much, yeah. There's some weights and a bunch of magnets. So but the like, pairing happens not from magnets. the case. The pairing happens from the ear, ear pod, AirPods. It it seems. I mean, it talks to the. I, I think you're right. Yeah. There's no. Um, but there's your circuitry. There's in no the wire. Case. There's no. Yeah. It's pretty much just just the battery. I mean. That is yeah. so unattractive when you take it apart. Well, you're not supposed <laughs> to. I mean, I think Apple hey, would say. I'm allowed to do the obvious once per show. Apple would say these are not user serviceable. These are disposable. Right, so here's the problem is that they're, they're disposable, but they have a icon. If you flip open your case and you look inside the, the top cover of the case, there's a little trash icon, a little wheelie bin trash icon with an X through it. That means don't recycle. That means don't throw it away. You have to recycle it. Electronics recycle. Send it to an electronics recycler. So yeah. I spent all day yesterday at the biggest electronics recycler in the country with one of these AirPads, AirPods showing them and saying, hey, do you guys think you can recycle this? And the answer was no. So what you probably should do is send it to Apple. I mean, presumably Apple can recycle them. I don't think so either. I, th I think Apple's just punting on the issue. Uh, uh, they, they have really not been doing a good job. We have, so I've got here, this is the Apple. You know, I don't have, by the way, Kyle, I don't see that. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, that yeah, is yeah, yeah. really yeah. hidden. At yeah, the it's really hard to see, but there it is. Yeah, yeah. Are they usually that hidden, Kyle, these warnings uh, about how to recycle them? So the, the warning is legally required in Europe, so that's why they have to have it on oh, there, and Apple doesn't want it, and so Apple's hiding it <laughs> as, as tiny as they possibly so, can. So they, wait a minute, they le legally require the warning, but they don't legally require that they be recyclable. Uh, <laughs> enforcing that is really a challenge, uh, and, and you know the definitions of what is recyclable. I mean, I helped I helped work on the report. There's a report called IEC 62635, which is a recyclability analysis of consumer electronics. And the trick is defining how to how to separate these things. Recycling is really all about separation. Right. You separate the plastic from the metal from the battery. And the problem when you glue everything together is that you make it impossible to separate it out again. Now. Uh the other issue is that batteries don't last forever. At some point, uh, right. you're going to need to replace the batteries. I yeah. guess you can't. Right. So here's the grand question. How long is this battery going to last? 
For every other product Apple makes, they list the cycle count on their website. So for an iPhone, it's 400 charge cycles. For a MacBook Pro, it's 1,000 charge cycles. They're not listing the charge cycle count on these things. Uh oh. That's a bad sign, yeah? Apple tends to be pretty public when the numbers are good. Yep, kind of yeah. like Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Uh, so if you were to guess, though, how many cycles do you think we should expect out of these first-generation AirPods? I would guess three to 400, which if you, you know, and that's, that's a full cycle. So if you only use it halfway, then that's half a cycle. So I would say probably two to three years for most folks. I think that's right. Maybe you say, right, well, yeah. I'm going to lose it in that time frame. Is, yeah. that, is that a fair amount of time? Is that enough cycles? I think that's fair. I think two years is kind of what you expect from this kind of stuff. Okay. But um, I, I'm confused. Were we expecting these to be serviceable devices or are we kind of yeah. picking hairs here that are a bit too fine? Right, so I'm sympathetic to say that, okay, maybe repairability isn't the most important thing on these, but recyclability, I think, is really critical. Uh, I, I, I was looking at the original earbuds, and they've sold over a billion of them, and I took the wow. weight of the earbuds, and I multiplied it out, and it turns out they've made something like 22 million pounds of earbuds. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a, it's about 11,000 tons? And they're all them? in landfill, because nobody's recycling earbuds. I didn't know that was an I option mean, until I, the show. They, you absolutely can recycle earbuds, and that would be the hope, is like the material input, like there's rare earth metals in these things, yeah. and mining rare earths is really environmentally destructive. So right. we absolutely need to be recovering every rare earth we possibly can right. in recycling. Uh, and I just don't see it happening with a design like this. Well, I, I love, you know, when we talked with the, you about the MacBook Pro last time, you pointed out how unrecyclable those were as well. I love this focus, because uh, all along, iFix has all been about repairability. But when you have zero out of 10 repairability, there's nothing to talk about except can these be recycled? And it looks like that's a, a resounding. So no. should, we, should we not buy them because they're not recyclable? I I don't think I could ethically buy this product. Okay. I've got I've got my Edemotix that I'm using here. I like them a lot. I would not feel ethically comfortable using a non-recyclable product. And I think that that's something that we need to factor in. It's not just Apple. So the criticism that we got of this was, uh, of our teardown was people said, okay, that's fine, you're hating on Apple, but where are all of the other uh, wireless headsets that you've hated on? And so we have, so I have, this is some, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is a freebie uh, Bluetooth headset that I got from Pandora. Uh, and this kind of has the same problem. So I've got a carrying case of the big battery and then these things that have integrated non-replaceable batteries. So these suck too. So it's not just Apple. Anybody that's that's integrating batteries and making them non-replaceable, uh, I think has uh, some explanation to do. Is yeah. anyone doing this well or is everyone kind of, to use your phrase, sucking at the same... Well, the traditional wired headphones are great from a recyclability perspective. We're really good at recycling cables. We do it all day long. Uh, so it, it's it's really when you start gluing in batteries that you have a challenge. If you look at the wearable space, some of the wearables have replaceable batteries or easy to separate things, and some like Fitbit don't. So it, it just totally depends on the company. All right. Kyle, you do a great job. Keep up the good work and uh, keep holding these companies' feet to the fire. I think it's important. And we need to know as consumers what we're buying. You can find out more at ifixit.com. It is also the world's repair manual, parts, repairs, for everything from iPhones to McDonald's Happy Meal toys. It's all there. And we sent <laughs> yeah. out, I, don't, I think you know this, we sent out iFixit toolkits to many of our hosts as uh, Christmas gifts. Oh, I didn't know that. Hey, yeah, without, did you get one? Did you get one? <laughs> <laughs> I can send you one. He meant favorite hosts, not, you know. <laughs> and without fail, every single one who received one, some people got candy. Didn't every, get that either. <laughs> carbs. Anybody, everybody who got one was thrilled and said, oh, I've been meaning to get one of these. They were all very happy. So that's that was a great holiday gift for us to send out to Awesome, our, great. Well, hopefully folks. soon we're working on our, our new Retina MacBook Pro repair manual. So hopefully you'll be able ah, to use it to I fix hope, those things. I pray. But, but probably not this. Not this. Kyle Weens, thank you so much for joining us. Founder of iFixit.